Hi, I'm Chad Harrington from Him Publications, and I'm reviewing Jennifer Barnett's book, First Freedoms. The subtitle is Drawing Near to God by Cultivating a Wholehearted Prayer Life. By the end of this video, you'll know what the main message of the book is, what my perspective on the book is, and why you might want to use this for discipleship group material. For a full review and all sorts of details, go to Hymn Publications and search for First Freedoms on the blog. My biggest three takeaways. Number one, we all face legitimate challenges in prayer. Christians always talk about how they want to grow in reading the Bible and praying. We make prayer requests for this all the time. Whenever I get to the end of a discipleship group, I'm guaranteed to hear, I want to be better at prayer or reading the word. And the reason is because it's hard to read the Bible and to pray more. Jennifer Barnett in this book addresses the prayer issue. She says that sin, guilt, shame, unforgiveness, wounds, ungodly beliefs, what she calls entanglements, and the enemy can all cause us to experience distance from God. Through her ministry called Freedom Prayer, uh, you can go to freedomprayer.org. She's compiled the best practices to help people overcome each one of these barriers to cultivate a deep prayer life with God. And that's what her book, First Freedoms, is all about. Number two, we all need help learning how to pray. Jennifer Barnett intended her book, First Freedoms, to be used by church discipleship groups so that they can start experiencing more freedom in prayer. The problem in our prayer lives is that we hit barriers, and we need help working through those barriers. So she goes through the three main sections of the book, which is beautifully designed, by the way. It's, it's beautiful. It has a one-tone blue color, just mm, matches the cover. She goes through the connection piece, um, which is part one. It's five chapters, our connection with the Father. Then section two is the core which is the core issues that we need to work through in prayer and the culmination of a wholehearted prayer life. So full disclosure, I'm the publisher of this book. So I've actually been able to hear how churches are using it. There's 17 chapters. So churches sometimes get creative on how to use this. So a lot of times people will use just one part of it, like the seven core chapters, that's section two, and they'll work through each barrier in prayer. And then people can use the book otherwise as they see fit as well. Or they'll go through a combination of chapters. So the book is written for both men and women. So it's perfect for any discipleship group context. Men only, women only, or mixed gender. At the end of the day, we all need help learning how to pray. And this book gives us tools on how to do that. Number three, we long to draw near to God in prayer. First Freedoms is written for both men and women. But I love how Jennifer brings a female touch to conversations around prayer. One of my favorite stories from the book, for an example, continues to come back to my mind time and time again, even though I, I read it a few years ago. It's the story of how Jennifer and her husband adopted a little girl from China. Once they brought her back home, you know, obviously they immediately treated her as their daughter, which she was. But their new daughter didn't always accept that. So every Friday night, they would have a movie night with pizza and cookies. They would spread the pizza and the cookies on the rug and just kind of eat freely and watch the movie and have a good time. Her daughter would come to the edge of the rug. And they had a family of four at the time. Uh, four kids. So, But the one daughter who had been adopted would come to the edge of the rug, but she actually wouldn't get on the rug with the rest of the family. She might take a bite of food and watch the movie, but she always kept some distance. Jennifer never forced her. Her husband never forced her. And then she writes, One Friday evening, without any special prompting, her daughter willingly crawled up in her lap and stayed there. She said, And I'm thankful to say that she has stayed near ever since. We long for nearness with God, and God longs for nearness with us too. He's waiting. So bottom line, I highly recommend this book for groups who want to grow in prayer. 
There are both personal reflection questions and group discussion questions included in the book for each chapter, so I think it's perfect for group discussions. Plus, there's actually workbook questions and exercises included for each chapter as well. So, what can this book accomplish for your group? It can introduce your group to ideas and areas in prayer that have likely been neglected for a lot of people, based on my experience. It can open up hearts to God's love and His desire to be close to them. It can help people to see their specific barriers in prayer. It provides practical tools for growing in prayer. And it gives all of us a reminder about the effects of the unseen spiritual realm as we seek God in prayer. So that's my review of Jennifer Barnett's book, First Freedoms. Check out my full review and all sorts of details to help you and your group decide about using this in your group context. For that review, go to himpublications.com and search the blog for First Freedoms.